John, you are coming to the United States of America uh, to tour your 2021 album, Metal Box Rebuilt in Dub. And it's a reinterpretation of the Metal Box record that uh, Public Image put out in 1979, which was also called Second Edition. Now, let's go back to 1979 in, in your country. The conservatives win the general election. Margaret Thatcher becomes the first uh, female prime minister of the UK. You must have been very excited about that. Uh, the country. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I was on the picket line at Wapping. Okay. I ve veerent, vehemently against Thatcher. Vehemently. Okay. Did a lot of damage to the country. Okay. Um, you, you're also 1979. You're in recession, and uh, also uh, Monty Python puts out the Life of Brian. Wonderful film. How was that album? How was Metal Blocks? A reflection of the time. Well, it's pretty bleak. Um, I don't know. A reflection of the times is a pretty bleak primal record. I guess the world around us was very austere. Mm -hmm. it, it was post-war. We hadn't had a boom like um, America had had, or or Germany. We were, you know, pretty backward. You got a horrible class system in this country. So to people with money, are always cool. They always fly above it. You know, it really is. It's it's as it's as rigid as the Indian um, caste system, actually. You know, so it was there was street after street of boarded up built the buildings, concrete uh, um, of, of corrugated iron. You know, these sort of weird metal fences that went on for miles, and it's pretty bleak. Um, all you had to do really was drink. You know, you had your sort of pubs, rough nightclubs. It was pretty violent. Um, football was always big and football hooliganism was a massive thing then, you know, so it was pretty um, limited. Working class culture was still very vibrant mm. and it was still a lot. Humour's great. You mentioned Monty Python. So the British have always got great humour, as the Irish have as well, you know. So there's great humour, great irony, ironic humour. So we had that and some of that you hear in public image, of course, you know, but um it was definitely a case of where being in a band was great because you could make your own fun. You know, mm. I never expected to be. So for me, it was a tremendous bonus. It was like a dream world opened up for me because I was never a trained musician. I was very drawn to bass, you know. Uh, so I, I, when I picked a bass, I knew, I knew what to do with it. Whereas you give me a guitar, oh man, there was little chords and, you know, it's all, yeah, oh, oh, not for me, you know. It's your big it, hand. It, it, I've got big hands. They're very sensitive hands. They're sort of rough working. They're funny, surprisingly sensitive for a rough working class man like me. But um, yeah, they do the job, you know. So well, you know what so, they I'm say not, about not, big hands, not, right? I know. Ex well, I'm not going to say big gloves. I know what you're saying, and it's very true from what I know. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> But yes, it, it was a reflection of, uh, of the bleak times and a very, very experimental record when uh, punk rock was sort of uh, morphing into pop new wave. And this was a really a, a, an about face, especially for your uh, bandmate, Johnny Lydon, who was in the Sex Pistols. So. Yeah, it was. I think I think when but the first thing we did was the, the eponymously titled Public Image. And I think everybody thought, wow, actually, this is going to be fantastic because that was like a song, really. Mm. It was a bit poppy even. So people were thinking this is great. And then we quickly got bored with the idea of doing song structures and just went straight to, I always say to people, I think it was, a, we did, I didn't really articulate it with Levine in that way, but I think it was a sense of, well, we can do this. And then with the second album, you do that. And then with the third album, you kind of do something really crazy. And I think we thought, oh, fuck it, let's just, Go for the go for broke now and do the extreme one now. So you know we did sort of this very primal, um, very modal kind of sound. There's not a lot of modulation in it. It's not not a hell of a lot of melody or, or musicality at times in it, as, as what people would understand as musicality. Um, so there was a different sensibility there. I think that was fueled, pushed very much by me and Levine that mm. side of it, you know. And um, and John John was happy went along with it. To be fair, the lyrics that he wrote for me at that time, that particular time, were more like great prose. It was like Samuel Beckett or um, Harold Pinn. It was like a playwright would, would kind of write. 
I don't think he's done anything uh, like it before or since then. I thought it was really fantastic. So it was a one-off. The, the other factors, I think, were we didn't have management, you know, so it was all very free form. The business wasn't looked after properly at all. We had a record company that was run by a kind of hippie guy, you know, yet again, one of these elite kind of privately educated guys, Richard Branson, who, to be fair, was, was very personable. They just let us do what we wanted. So there was no parental guidance or mentoring. We could go in the studio, do what we wanted. You can imagine if you had a hard-bitten manager, you know, they'd be, this, you're, you're, you, this is ridiculous. You have to write songs, you know. You know, they, they, they'd insist on getting a, a producer in or something. I mean, I think they tried getting producers in, but one producer who came in got... A, there was a story I mugged him, that guy, <laughs> John Leckie. So the session started and I walked in and mugged him and then went off down a pub. So... It wasn't going to work with producers. We did what we wanted, and that was that, you know. Mm. Interesting that you had a modal approach instead of a song approach. Um, well, the, re the reason that happened, I mean, you both know as bass players, I didn't have a clue about, you know, notation or anything. And I just I just looked at the dots on the fret and my diagonals. It was all very simple. So, you know, it was all diagonals um, and open strings. And and that's how pop tone started, you know, just this one diagonal. And then down again on a diagonal. You know, and then so it's this big open octavy intervals and then going to something chromatic. Which of course also the fact I was using a fender precision helped that because I wouldn't have done those bass lines if I wasn't on a Fender Precision. There's something about a Fender Precision. I know a lot. You both know a lot to right, do with the thick neck and with, the, and the your, slip coil, with, yeah. Yeah, a lot to do with the strings you're using. But there's something about Fender's got a sound that lends itself to those kind of chromatic runs, you mm. know. Well, and, and, of course, the Fender has an incredibly good E string, isn't it? It's a lovely tone. When you get down to the G string, a little bit, a little bit slightly tinny for me, you know. Yeah. You know, whereas when I, the, I use a magnum ovation as well, and that's got a lovely sort of fruity G string. It's more like an, it's kind of stand up kind of harmonic to it because it's a thick wooden thing, you know. So there's all kinds of unpredictable sub harmonics with it, you know. Yeah. We, well, you know, David and I were big fans of Miles Electric here, especially Bitches Brew and the Jack Johnson, which is all modal compositions. And it's interesting because you, your love of dub is also in that same, there's, it's not, like pop song standard it's mostly dubs yeah. and grooves and 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 that type of uh, approach so i can see the con you know the, the correlation there that's right and of course there's a correlation as we know with those modes the kind of modes i played and e minor and a minor you know it's not they're not a million miles away so mm. you could you could even you i realize now you know i came to it it was it was if, if you if i was sentenced by a cult to only ever play songs from here on in to E minor and A minor, I'd be yeah sure okay you know, no problem you know I'll miss I'll miss B a little bit but C not to have a keen on you know uh, and and not having to play E flat those piano chords like E flat great because I hate it when I go for sessions and it's E flat it's like the worst fucking key yeah. I I put on second edition this morning to drive to get coffee and it really. You know, as, as as you grow as a musician, you begin to almost define what you're hearing. And, oh, that's this, that's this. And what was so amazing, I said to Tom, I said, I didn't notice the other times I listened to it that it is. It's 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 more beat than chordal. Uh, as a matter of fact, it seems to me like all the songs are built on one key. And I was yeah. fascinated with just thinking about that see how much like the music of today is being built maybe not as experimental unfortunately but it's still being built on a single chord with a beat it, it's really fascinating yeah i like the more simple the better for me i'm a very simple guy that talks a lot likes to think i'm a complex personality but i'm not i'm a simple soul i like it things really straightforward very very simple building blocks and i like thinking of music rather than sequential i mean obviously you have to think of it that way and you write from call as you get older you learn to write from chords and chord progressions but i like the thought of a painting you know 
with the novel, you've got to turn the pages. You can't take all the information of the novel in, in one go. Whereas with a painting, you can stand in front of a Rothko painting and it's almost visceral. You know, it's physical. You're looking up at it and you're, it's the, you're, the whole thing's there spread out. And I like to think of that with music as being vertical, with this modal kind of music. It's a big mm -hmm. sheet of stuff and you're, you're, it's all happening at once in some way, you know. And I like it with a very simple basis. To me, it's like architecture, say, with Gothic sort of arches, you know, uh, uh, um, not the classic, sorry, the classical Greek pillars and arches, um, you know, very straight lines, you know, very, very simple, those pillars, the curve, you know, very, very simple, basic design that you can you can build a lot on, you know. So, and I'm very happy with E, you know, and there's something about E, I talked about with Bill Laswell about this a lot, and I love going down really low, but I find um, when I'm really low, sometimes the keyboard bass is even better for me with the yeah, juiciness yeah. of the tonality when you get down, you know, into low Bs and low As and beyond sort of thing, you know. But there's something about the low E, um, especially, you know, going with, with a B when, you, when you're going down to B, like, you know, public image. It's very solid, you know. Um, and I still, a lot of my stuff still really like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, now, interesting you talk about design, musical design, architecture. I remember getting a metal box in 1979 at E.J. Corvette's furniture store, <laughs> and it came in a metal box. And yeah. it was a difficult record. First of all, it was hard to get out of the metal box. I mean, because the, the discs were crammed in there. And if I remember correctly, you had to play the records at 45 RPM. It wasn't at 33. Why? What, what was the idea behind the design? that you know you, it was kind of a difficult design it was innovative but it was difficult well i remember when we were discussing it it was me john and a guy dennis morris who had a lot to do with all the mm. pill design uh with the covers and everything and we were talking it was this thing let's get away from bloody cardboard you know square bloody cardboard how bored fed up with it so let's package these records in something else so we thought, you basically, you get elemental. You start thinking of the elements, you know, wood, metal, and then maybe you think of glass even, you know, and it's, it obviously comes in a or material maybe, uh, some kind of a pouch. And as we're talking, we keep going back to metal, and then we saw where we were talking a big cine film, you know, cine film canister, right. which is basically very similar to metal box. Took it from there. Dennis lived around the corner from the Metal Box Company, which is a famous British company called Metal Box, you know, um, that makes all stuff, all, makes kinds, all kinds of metal containers. And so that's where that's where it came from. It's as simple as that, you know. Wow. And, wow. and with the 45s, the reason we had 45s is because with disco 45s, as we used to call them, the bass response is m maximum and much better than the bass response you get on 33 and a third. Oh, that makes sense, yes. Because the, the grooves are wider. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.